Hey guys, Alex Hager here from Tech Taboo, and today we're going to be taking a look at the LG 31MU97CB True 4K Monitor. I hope I got all that right. Over the last few months, I've been saving up quite a bit of money to pick this thing up because obviously this channel isn't big enough to get any sort of demo samples or anything like that. And I emailed LG and got nothing but denials. I've been saving up for it for a little while. When this monitor came out, it was well above $1,000. And just a few weeks ago, the price dropped on Amazon and I jumped on that because I've been wanting this thing forever. So what, what it came down to for me when I was looking for a new monitor is do I go ultra wide or do I go 4K? And in my previous video, I mentioned the ultra wide, the Dell, they make a, the U3415W? Ultra wide is not compatible with a lot of stuff. If you want to game, it can be an incredible experience, but in some instances it can't be an experience at all. Like I've heard that if you play Dota, which I don't, but if you play Dota, um, they cap it at 16 by nine because it would give you an unfair advantage in the game, which is very understandable because I think uh, eSports players play on like 25 to 27 inch screens that are 16 by 9 and if you had a 21 by 9 screen you'd be able to see so much more and that simply wouldn't be fair so I completely understand that though it's not 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 the most fun as a consumer for me 4k just made more sense let's take a look at the LG 31 MU 97 this LG monitor has a 31 inch screen size diagonal what a lot of people are going to be looking for in this display is that beautiful 4k display Currently, it is the only true 4K monitor on the market at 4096 by 2160, whereas most 4K monitors are 3840 by 2160. Additionally, the aspect ratio is 17 by 9, which is a little wider than the traditional 16 by 9. In terms of inputs, you're going to get two HDMI, four USB 3.0, one headphone out, DisplayPort, and mini DisplayPort. The stand is remarkable. It has height adjustment, pivot, and tilt. Now it is certainly a larger monitor weighing in at about 22 pounds with the stand. Now this monitor has a 10-bit color depth, which means you're going to get more accuracy, more brilliance when you're looking at your monitor. So for color professionals or video or graphic, whatever it may be, having 99.5% coverage of the Adobe RGB is going to be awesome. You're also going to get really nice color profiles that make things just look gorgeous like DCP P3, which is the digital cinema color standard. Now I will say this monitor does take a good bit of time to boot up. So if you're somebody who needs your monitor to be on instantly, which I don't personally see being a huge issue, this monitor may not be right for you. Now it does have a five millisecond response time, which is pretty lame when it comes to gaming. You're usually standard to seeing about one to two milliseconds with uh, a high refresh rate. Now, if you're on DisplayPort, your refresh rate is going to be 60 hertz. And if you're on any of the other ones, you're going to be looking at 30 hertz or 50 hertz. So using DisplayPort with this monitor is definitely going to be your best bet. But if you're looking for a professional monitor with true 4K, a great stand, a nice aspect ratio, and if you're a professional, this is one of the best monitors you can buy right now. So to start off the list, the 17 by 9 aspect ratio is really, really helpful, especially if you're doing video work, photo work, anything that will take advantage of the wider area. I've found this especially true, like I said, in the Adobe products and other things, just to have more stuff on your desk. 4K brings more potential for more apps running, and I have I love every single second of that. Also, another big plus is it has an incredible stand. It is super durable, and the pictures I've found on Amazon, Newegg, wherever, simply don't do it justice. So if you do any sort of video work or photo work, well, TN panels and TFT displays can offer incredible response times that are more than okay for gaming. I would highly advise an IPS or in-plane switching display if you're doing video work, photo work, anything professional based because you need color accuracy and those other panels simply cannot make that happen. 
For the pros, that just about covers it up. I'm sure I could talk about this thing all day. Um, mainly just having more access on my Premiere timeline and being able to look at those audio tracks is really nice because I'm always stacking up my audio layers because I record my microphone separately and all my other angles with different cameras. And having access in Premiere to see all of that and keep it condensed is... It's indescribable. You just, you really have to experience it for yourself. So with that being said, let's talk about the cons. We started off the list with 17 by nine as a pro, but it is also a con and somewhat serious of a con. In a few games that I played, they didn't support the wider aspect ratio. So I was forced to have bars on the side and I didn't really appreciate that. That was a pretty big bummer. But that being said, I think having 17 by nine is definitely better. I'll deal with the trade-offs. The fact that you get that extra width and applications is extremely useful and I can deal with the bars. I mean, they are definitely annoying. The next con, uh, it's definitely not gaming oriented. So I did mention how gaming looks beautiful on here, but if you are a serious gamer and you don't want any latency, I simply wouldn't suggest this monitor. I don't game much. Um, and if I do, I just want to look at stuff and have it be pretty because I'm certainly not skilled at PC gaming. So having the competitive edge isn't necessarily what I need. The response time is five milliseconds. Some people have recorded that it's even higher, I've heard. It is an IPS display, which is a serious pro for me, but that does come with the risk of some backlight bleed, which I do see a little bit on this one, but it's definitely bearable. Nothing that would make me return the monitor ever. Another con is if you're trying to run HDMI, I believe this one is running HDMI 1.4, which has a maximum of this monitor running at 50 hertz on 4k maybe it's 30 i'm pretty sure it's 50 though i should really research this stuff before i couldn't be happier that i purchased this monitor i've been wanting it for such a long time and i really do think it is probably one of the best investments i've ever made technology wise and i've made quite a few more than i'd like to admit I think this is a great option for a lot of people and I'd highly suggest picking one up for yourself. I will have links below so you can check it out. And I hope that this review has helped you make a decision. If there are things that you liked about this video that you, you enjoyed that I touched on, please mention those down below. It's been a while since I've been reviewing technology again. Uh, if there are things that you thought were missing, instead of just trolling, if you guys could give me some critique on what you would have liked to see, please leave that down below because I am all about content and I want to make my stuff as great as I can so I can help people make smarter buying decisions when it comes to technology.